out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Verse 13, the Bible says, And Balaam rose up early in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get and get you into your land, for the Lord refused to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said unto him, That says Balak, son of Zippah, let nothing, I pray thee, hinder you from coming unto me. For I will promote you unto the very great honor. I will do whatever you want, you say unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, cast me these people. And Balaam answered and said unto his servants, uh, and unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me. Verse 20, we find God answering, and God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with thee. But yet the word which I shall say unto you, that you shall do. And Balaam rose up early in the morning, saddled up his ass, and went with the princes of God. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversely against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass and to turn her into the right way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on either side and a wall on that side. And when, he, and when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went farther and stood in the narrow space where there was no place, there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that you smite me this three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because you have mocked me, out there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill you. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am I not... I Am not I your ass upon which you ride ever since I was brought to unto this day? Has was I ever wants to do so unto you? And he said, No. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thy ass three times? Behold, I went out to withstand you, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I would have slain you and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. For I knew not thou stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displeases thee, I will get back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with this man, but only the word that I shall speak unto you, you will speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went on to meet him unto the city of Moab, which is the border of Arnon, which is the outermost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not honestly send unto thee to call him? Wherefore comes thou not to me? And I am not able to do indeed, and I am not able indeed to promote thee to honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, 
I am come unto thee. Have I now no I ha, have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God puts in my mouth that I shall speak. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, today I just want us to talk. Today I don't want to preach, I just want us to talk. Be the first Sunday of the year. And uh, I've been in prayers and the Lord has spoken to me concerning some of the things that are going to happen in this year of 2019. And that is why we are saying 2019 is the year of divine alignment. Uh, alignment means that you are positioned strategically so that you may work in relation with the others, praise the name of the Lord. We find the name alignment used mostly when we're talking about uh, wheel alignment in the car. Uh, the wheels are aligned, they are positioned so that each wheel may be strategically positioned to work relatively with each other, praise the name of the Lord. And so when we talk about divine alignment, we are talking about a lot of shifting that is going to take place in our lives this year praise the name of the lord and the lord was speaking to me concerning the church and concerning his people that the alignment and the shifting and the moving and the positioning will not only affect individuals but this is so corporate it's more of a church issue praise the name of the lord and as i was praying and preparing the lord led me to this story of balaam and I want us to learn about divine direction. Because when we talk about alignment, when we talk about positioning, there will be movement. There will be, uh, there will be shifting of position. Praise the name of the Lord. And how are we going to understand where we are supposed to move to, what we are supposed to do, the steps we are supposed to take, unless we subject and, and, and humble ourselves to be led of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So today we are speaking about divine direction. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is going to divinely direct us. And as we talk about divine direction, I was praying and the Lord led me to this text in the book of Numbers as we have read. And I wanted us to read the whole chapter. I hope you didn't get tired of reading. It's a very interesting story. Praise the name of the Lord. As we come to understand and, uh, and learn some of the lessons we need to learn when we subject ourselves to the leading of the Lord, some of the obstacles that we are going to face some of the requirements that are needed for us to be divinely aligned and positioned for us to be able to fulfill the purposes of God in our generation. Praise the name of the Lord. So uh, when we talk about divine direction, how many agree with me that God's ways are always the best? Amen. Do you agree that God's ways are always the best. We agree. We know that. That God's ways are always the best. But how many times do we follow God's ways and not our ways? Many at times we feel tempted to not follow God's ways. Because sometimes God's ways may seem to be inconveniencing what we want. Our ways. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a big difference between saying and there's a big difference between doing. When you say you know God's ways are the best, there is a difference between the person who is saying, I know God's ways are the best, and the person who is doing and following God's ways. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I want us to learn from this man. I say today I'm not preaching. I want us to learn from this man. His name is Balaam. You know, I all the way oh, for a long time I thought Balaam was a, a man of God. I thought he was a righteous man. But yesterday as I was reading this, I understood that he was a diviner. He was somebody who operated with magic, who operated with other spirits. He could be able to cast. He could be able to speak things that would happen upon people. Praise the name of the Lord. And we find the king of Moab 
when he saw the children of Israel, the Bible says that he was so much afraid. He was afraid because they were so many. And he was also afraid because he had seen and he had heard what the children of Israel had done to the Amorites. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The children of Israel had fought with the Amorites and they had conquered them. And so the king of Moab decided, if I am going to win these people, if I am going to conquer them, I have to win them in the spiritual realm. I have to place a curse upon them. If I win this battle in the spiritual, if I declare these people are cursed, then I can be able to fight with them. I can be able to destroy them. Praise the name of the Lord. And this opened up my eyes to see that most battles are won in the spiritual realm. Because this king understood, if these people are blessed, I cannot be able to do anything. But if we place a curse on them, if we declare them cursed, then it will be easier to fight for them and to overcome them. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why we find he sends for this guy, he's a well-known a diviner, he's a well-known sorcerer who is able to curse the people. And so he sends for him and he sends gifts and men of honor to go and persuade him. And the people get to Balaam and they tell him, you know what? The king has sent us. He has said that there are people who have come from Egypt and he wants you to come and curse them. Praise the name of the Lord. And we find that the first night he decides to tarry and seek God. Somehow Balaam knew that these were people of God. So he seeks God and asks God, what do I do? And it's not that God, he seeks God. God appears to him and says, who are these men? Say, so these men have come and they want me to go and cast the people from Egypt. And God spoke to Balaam and said, do not go. Because those people are blessed. You cannot be able to cast them. Those people are blessed. Do not go. Praise the name of the Lord. And we find that Balaam overcomes the temptation the first time. He wakes up in the morning and he tells the princess and those people sent by Balak, he tells them, go, I'm not coming with you because those people cannot be cast. Those people are blessed. So these people, goes, they go back to the king and they say, you know what? Balaam has refused to come. He says he cannot be able to cast these people. And Balak tries again and thinks, no, maybe I should sweeten the deal. Maybe I should add some more money. I should send some more honorable people. He sent more honorable princes and he even sent an assurance, whatever you want, whatever you need. I will be able, I'm in a position to honor you. I will be able to give you. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's where we find that Balaam fails. When the deal was sweetened. When more things were promised. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember we are speaking about divine direction. The fact that once you have been able to overcome a temptation that would have led you away from the will of God, it does not mean it is the end. The enemy will come again and again. The enemy does not give up. He will continue to try you. Praise the name of the Lord. So we find that when these people came again, he still considered their proposition. Lesson number one, I want us to understand today. I said today I'm just talking, I'm not preaching. I want us to understand today that when God asks you to do something, he is looking for absolute obedience. Number one, when God asks you to do something, he is looking for absolute obedience. Not delayed obedience, praise the name of the Lord. Not just half, half. Not I will think about it. The Lord is seeking for absolute obedience. In this year, as the Lord is divinely aligning us and positioning us, as we learn about divine direction, 
when the Lord asks you to do something, he is not negotiating with you. He does not expect you to look for a leeway. He expects us to obey him. Praise the name of the Lord. And I remember in the month of November, we learned so much about obedience. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want us to understand that this year, as we await to see the manifestation of the doings of the Lord in our lives, we also need to commit ourselves to obey when he commands us to do something. If the Lord is speaking to you to leave aside some of the things that have delayed you in the past, let us walk in absolute obedience. Verse 12, the Bible says that he was required to obey. Verse 12 says, and God said unto Adam, you shall not go with them. Thou shalt not cast the people, for they are blessed. The directions of God were very clear. You shall not go with them. And number two, you cannot cast those people because they are blessed. It was final. Praise the name of the Lord. But like Jonah, we find that Balaam did not adhere. He did not hear. When the people came the second time, he decided to try and go. So he went with them. Praise the name of the Lord. And what made him go? It is because of how the deal had become sweet. More money. Uh, he had been given a promise that he'll get whatever he needs. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. This year, we need to be very, very careful. That we are not going to exchange our love and our faith for material substance. Praise the name of the Lord. That we are not going to fall into disobedience just because of what the enemy is displaying in our eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. So we find that Balaam understood God perfectly. But he also decided that even if I understand God said I should not go, let me consider it. Let me think about it. So the, the men, the other men, the other company that came, he decided to go with them. Praise the name of the Lord. As we have read and we hear that when he started going, God put a roadblock. There was an angel. You remember that part we have read? Yeah. There was an angel with a sword on the way, there to block Balaam from going. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to know lesson number two. When, you, when we get out of God's will, he will often put roadblocks in the way to get our attention. I want you to get that. And for those who are writing, when we get out of God's will, he will often put roadblocks in the way to get our attention. I pray for us this year that we won't have to encounter roadblocks because we have moved out of the will of the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray for us this year that we are going to be able to walk in absolute obedience. We don't need roadblocks. We don't need detours. Praise the name of the Lord. We don't need uh, God trying to get our attentions by things not working out uh, in our favor. Praise the name of the Lord. We find that God gets his attention. An angel stands and God had even to use a donkey because he could not see. His eyes could not see it is an angel. But the donkey could see there is an angel with a sword standing ahead of us. And three times when the donkey tried to save his life, what did Balaam do? He gave the donkey a beating. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want you to know lesson number three. That when God puts a roadblock in your path. Do not give someone else a beating. Amen. Amen. When God puts a roadblock in your path. Do not give someone else a beating. Let me explain this. Sometimes when we encounter roadblocks. Instead of acknowledging and reflecting upon ourselves, what is going on? Why am I, am, I, am I blocked? Why am I not progressing? We start to check around us and attack the people around us. Praise the name of the Lord. We give other people a beating. Praise the name of the Lord. We start to blame other people. We blame the pastors. Amen. We blame our friends. We blame our neighbors. We blame the nation. We blame the government. We blame. All we do is blame others instead of having a self-reflection.
direction and checking our ways and checking where did I go wrong? Why am I stuck where I am stuck? Praise the name of the Lord. We try to figure out ways by blaming others. We even try to understand, is it a curse that is operating over my life? Do I have a generational curse? Do I have a curse on my name? And we try to figure it out in so many other ways. But this year, I want you to remember that in case you encounter a roadblock, do not give somebody else a beating. Praise the name of the Lord. And finally, we find that the Lord opened his eyes. And when his eyes were open, we find lesson number four. Once you recognize your mistake, humble yourself. We find him doing that in verse 31. Humble yourself. He humbled himself. He fell down on the ground. He humbled himself. And number two, he asked for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. And number three, repent. Praise the name of the Lord. He repented. And number four, he did something that was very much important. He said, I will only say that which you command me. He made a turnaround. A, re a real turnaround. Praise the name of the Lord. He was willing to go and try out his luck by cursing these people. But after having this encounter with the Lord, after having this roadblock, when he recognized his mistake, he humbled himself, he repented and asked for forgiveness and decided to subject himself to the will of the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. This year is an year that will require a lot of obedience. Praise the name of the Lord. A high level of a high level of, 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 of obedience. So we find he humbled himself. It's good when you realize that there are some things in your life that may have happened because you walked out of the will of the Father. It is good when you realize that mistake. Humble yourself. The Bible says that humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. The Bible also says that God gives grace to the humble, but he resists them proud. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes our pride has hindered us from being humble and repenting and recognizing that we have sinned or we have walked away from the will of the Father, that we have not walked in His way, that we have not walked in complete obedience. But today, as the beginning of the year, the first Sunday of the year, I have come to assure you that this is a year that the Lord requires us to walk in absolute obedience. And if you realize that you have not been walking in absolute obedience, when you realize your mistake, stop blaming others. Stop giving others a beating. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Our God is merciful. Praise the name of the Lord. We see a story of mercy. We see a story of grace. Oh, this guy, the angel, was set out to kill Balaam. But his reaction of humility, his reaction of repentance made him change his mind. He did not get death penalty. What he got was an assignment. He was told, okay, I see that you are even ready to go back and not go with this man. But because you have humbled yourself, because you have repented, this is what you are going to do. You shall go with them, but only say that which the Lord has put in your mouth. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's also good when you repent and you humble yourself. It is also good to come to the level where you ask forgiveness for those you have hurt. Because many a times we hurt people when we get into that roadblock. When we try to figure things out. Maybe somebody who loved you well enough to tell you, excuse me. Oh, I see that you have moved from the way. And instead of accepting the rebuke, you have talked back nasty. You have hurt one person or another in the process of the Lord trying to catch your attention. It is a season of also asking forgiveness of those you have hurt. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We find that Bala gets before the king. 
And he tells the king, you know what? I am come, yes. Oh, it has taken a long time to get here. It has taken a lot of convincing to get here. But let me assure you, king, I am not here by my own binding. I am here and I will only say that which the Lord puts in my mouth. And that is where we find that they offered sacrifices. I want you to go and get time and just read the next chapter and the next chapter. They offer sacrifices. They go up the mountain. And when Balaam opens his mouth, instead of cursing the children of Israel, he speaks a blessing. Oh, the king gets angry and he takes him to another place and gives more sacrifices. And instead of Balaam cursing, he gives a blessing. Three times they did that. But every time Balaam obeyed and did only that which the Lord had spoken. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is where we find that he even got to make the powerful declarations. One of my favorite declarations in the book of Numbers 23 verse 19. The Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and not do? Has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Behold, I have received a commandment to bless. And he has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. It is my desire this year that as we walk in absolute obedience, as the Lord aligns us, as the Lord positions us divinely, that we will have that confidence in what He has said, in what He has commanded us to do. That no matter how many levels of sacrifices may be offered, no matter how sweet the deal may get, we will still remain grounded and firmly rooted in obedience to this God. Praise the name of the Lord. Because our God is not a man that he should lie. And because today I want us to pray as I had said earlier. I just want to ask you a few questions here. Do you sometimes feel like you're mad timing? Like you're spinning around and round? Do you sometimes feel like you have shattered dreams? Do you sometimes feel like you make plans but they do not progress? We are at the beginning of the year. It is a time and a season when many people make resolutions. You make plans. And at the end of the year, we have a checklist to check uh, uh, of the resolutions that you had. How many have you fulfilled? And mostly many people have less than 50% fulfilled. Because you start with a lot of sight, with a lot of energy in January. But before we make those resolutions, before we make those plans, I want to ask you, are they in the will of the Father? Are they in the will of the Father? What has the Lord commanded you to do? What has the Lord required of you? Praise the name of the Lord. I remember the beginning of last year. It was a tough year for me at the beginning. And I remembered when I had my time of prayer and God spoke to me and said, whatever you asked of me to do, I did. It is now time you ask me what I need you to do for me. last year I looked around and I didn't 
have anything written that this is what God I want you to do for me. Last year was a year of asking God, what do you want me to do? Every month, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And if there is a year I can say that it was so productive, was that year. In the work of the Lord, in the work of the ministry, there were challenges, but the Lord was faithful. Praise the name of the Lord. And this year before you light that list, if you have not yet written and if you have written it already, I just want you to reflect, what does the Lord want me to do? Am I in the will of the Father? And I want to read these verses as we get into prayers in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, Proverbs is next to Psalms. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 5, 6, 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So this year, as you make the plans, I want us to put our trust in the Lord. Trusting in Him with all our hearts. And also not lean on our own understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have understanding of a few things here and there. But let us not lean on our own understanding. In all our ways, we acknowledge him. As we make plans, in all our ways, the Bible says all, not some, but in all our ways, we are going to acknowledge him. And the Bible says, and he shall direct our paths. He shall guide our steps. He shall order our steps. He shall direct the way we go. He shall be the one directing us. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If there is something the Lord desires of us, is for us to humble ourselves, subject ourselves to his leading, and allow him to be acknowledged in everything that we do. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, be not wise in your own eyes. Let us not be wise in our own eyes. What does that mean? Let us not be like we know it all. We already know. We have it figured out. Praise the name of the Lord. This is an ear that you've never seen before. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Or has anybody else lived 2019 before? No. And so they know how it's going to turn out. No, this is an ear you've never lived before. Uh, the, the encounters you had last year may not be the encounters that you're going to have this year. We may be having even the meetings. We, we sat down, we planned our calendar, and we have these meetings and events that are coming up. The events may be happening another time, but the way that they are going to happen will not be the similar way that they happened last year. Praise the name of the Lord. So we might say that we have a little knowledge of what we saw last year. But let us not be wise in our own eyes. Let us fear the Lord and depart from evil. And we're not talking about departing from evil. We are talking about taking away all disobedience. Hallelujah. Amen. You find this man of God, Balaam, he was told, don't go. But what did he do? He, he decides to go. And even after he decides to go, the Lord is still trying to catch his attention. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I pray in the name of Jesus.
that each and every one of us will walk in obedience to the will of the Father. Each and every one of us will allow the Lord to direct us divinely and to position us where he wants us to be so that we may be able to fulfill his purpose in our generation. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to pray. I want us to stand before the presence of the Lord. I'm just going to pray with the people who are watching us online and then we'll get into prayer with you because I want to pray personally. I want to even lay hands on you today being the beginning of the year in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the lessons that we have learned today, oh God. That when you command us to do something, you expect absolute obedience to your Father. And even when we walk away from your will, oh God, sometimes you re you make you 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 lay your roadblocks ahead of us to catch our attentions. We pray, King of all glory, that even when you cut our attention, oh God, when we encounter the roadblocks, dear Father, that we are not going to be quick to give others a beating and blend them, dear Father. Father, but we are going to be quick to realize and to see that it is you, Lord, calling us back to the way in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus for each and every hearer of this word, O oh God, that may have walked away from your ways, dear Lord, and behold this time they realize the reason why they are facing the obstacles and the roadblocks. It's because we want to catch their attention. I pray in the name of Jesus that each and every one of us will be able to humble ourselves before you and repent, O oh God. And we thank you for you are full of mercy. We thank you for you are gracious, O oh God. We thank you for you will do a new thing Thing, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor. Let us continue in prayer. Just like lift up your voices before the Lord. Let us continue in prayer.